Welcome back. I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw the level 40 Metreo Hinkus or Hankus from Jurassic World the game. Like I don't really know how to pronounce it, but at least I can draw it. So this is going to be a full body view of this sea creature. It's level 40, so it's got some good spikes. But first I want to be able to I want to see if we're going to be able to fit it on the page. So we'll put two lines down on your paper. And the mouth and jaw and basically the whole head is going to be right here. It's a crocodile shaped head. And that's called a slender body. And it's sort of slanted because it's holding its head in the air. It's just a quick outline. Let's see if we can get it on the paper. This is a new sketch book, by the way. I got it for um, Christmas. And um, I finished my old one right before 2016 finished. So we're just going to finish up this outline here. Spikes. Eye is going to be right about there. Got his short little limbs. Short back limbs. Like this creature is more meant to swim than to walk on land, obviously. So yeah, that's pretty good for our outline. Now we can begin refining it. I can promise you the finished image will not look like this. This is just a quick outline so we can fit everything on the paper. So yeah, I'll start by refining the head. I'm gonna work from right to left. I usually don't do that, but I usually go from the other way around just so I don't smear. But it'll be easier if I do it this way. If you want to put in the head, it's very slender and crocodile-like. And now we can put in the eye. I usually put in the eye real right at the beginning of the drawing. And I'm actually going to make this snout longer. It appears to be longer than the reference images I'm using. More like that. I actually researched this aquatic creature. And it's very similar to the one in the game, except... It's more like the one in the game at level 1. Not what it looks like in, at level 40. So we'll put the eye in. Put some lines around the eye like that. I'll put the main lines that are in the head. This nose is right about there. And this also looks like the creature in Ice Age 2, the meltdown. I just realized that. It looks quite similar to that creature. If any of you have seen, I'm sure some of you have seen Ice Age, the meltdown. I've always been a big fan of Ice Age. I remember when I was little, I was, all, I was like really excited that they were making a dinosaur one. Because I mean, I'm okay with mammoths and Ice Age creatures, but I like the dinosaurs a lot. I was a little bit disappointed by the dinosaurs, not that much. They made them look a little bit too cartoonish. But I still enjoyed the movie. It's really funny. So back to our drawing. This is the bottom jaw. I'm just making this line here so we can fit it. So it would fit together if it clamped shut. But we don't need that anymore, so you can take your eraser. And erase 
the lines we don't need. And now you can put in t the teeth on the top jaw. It's got lots of small serrated teeth, probably meant for catching fish, ichthyostega, or any of those other little amphibian type animals. Or possibly even smaller dinosaurs and mammals. But whichever mammals were around. So yeah, that looks good for the teeth. Now I'm going to put a little bit more refinement into our creature. It does have lots of scales because it's a very armored beast. So put scales lining the brim of the mouth, which would essentially be the lips, but crocodile type animals don't have lips, and neither do most dinosaurs. So. That looks very nice for the top of the head. Now we just have to put in some more shading. And put in the key lines that really show the shape of the head and the texture it's got. We want to make it look like the dinosaur is actually alive, not like just like it was just posing for us. So we'll put some scales in. Scales, as I say in all my other videos, always make the dinosaur look more professional. It is tedious, of course, to put in lots of scales. But in the end, it's all worth it. So I don't know if you guys read my comment in the discussion part of my channel. If you just click on my channel and go to discussion. I asked you guys if you would like if I did some tutorials on how to draw some creatures from War Dragons, the video game. So I'm going to wait to see how you guys respond to that. You can respond at the bottom of this video, of course, too. I'll read the comments. Because the game will be restarted, um, or at least did one video on War Dragons. And I really like um, dragons and um, fantasy, along with dinosaurs, of course. I like dinosaurs more, but <laughs> I love fantasy and stuff. So that caught my attention. I just want to know if you guys would appreciate that and watch the video on how to draw a few dragons. Again, I'm not going to turn this channel into a da uh, dragon channel. I just might do one or two videos. So yeah, that looks really good for the head. Even though it took, took us quite a while. But it's definitely looking better than the outline did. The outline always is deceiving because when people first click on the video, they're like, oh, wow, look, he can't really draw because <laughs> he didn't put a good outline in. But the outline doesn't have to be very good. And I do confess that I should get better at them. But for me, the outline's not as important as the refining. And many people would agree, it's just a fast part of the video just to make sure you don't make any big mistakes later on. So we can go ahead and add the bottom teeth. I'll add the ones on the far side of the jaw first. And then we can add some here. Let's erase a bit. So our teeth will look, you can see our teeth better. I broke the lead on my pencil. I did that like three times and 
my last video, the T-Rex, how to draw a T-Rex. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in a bit around there. I'll make this line a little darker. And now we can also add some border scales, that's what I call them, to the bottom jaw. So we'll just put those in and add a few lines that'll make that look better. And again, we will put in scales, basically just putting little round circles all over the skin. Shade as well. I didn't actually get that good at shading until around five years ago. Before then, I would just draw like the outlines of pictures. I wouldn't put any scales in. It's kind of lazy. But then I found out if you really want your picture to look good, you have to actually put in the time. So there, we're done with the head of our dinosaur sea creature. I sure somebody's going to correct me. I won't be unhappy about that and how I pronounce it. Metrio or Hinkus. That's my best attempt. I'm way better at pronouncing dinosaur names, the Endosaurus. <laughs> Those are easier for me. So we're going to give just to give it some motion, we're going to, the back is going to be bent. So it's looking, its head's arched up. So we want to give it movement. And we can go ahead and I'll put the spikes in first. So the shoulder is right about, the shoulder blade would go like that. So the biggest spike is right over the shoulder blade. They point backwards and are quite large. The real one, I will say, did not have spikes like this. <laughs> In fact, a lot of people think that dinosaurs did not have that much spikes. Obviously some of them did, like the sauropods, there's proof that they had spikes, like. Even though I draw spikes on my T-Rexes, there's no actual proof there is, there were spikes on them. So that's good for the spikes, we're now going to put in some shading and texture. I apologize if I'm blocking with my hand, I always try and avoid that. Because I've watched some how to draw videos myself, quite a few actually, and it, sometimes I get annoyed when the people do that and like you can't even see what they're doing. You have to wait till they finish and then pause the video and copy it down. So basically what I'm doing is just making the lower three quarters of each spike a darker shade, I'm giving it a darker shade. That's basically what shading is. Putting shadows into your drawing. So I'll put in the shadows for these. I'll stop at this one because we will have, I'm going to work on the body a bit first. Erase the smudge marks. 
smudging is always a big problem when drawing. I mean, it doesn't look too bad if they're evenly spread out, but if there's too many smudges, it just doesn't look like, yeah. <laughs> I don't like smudges, so. I'm gonna continue here to the arm. Give it some wrinkles there, which it has. in this vein. I want to make it look organic, so make it completely random. Not like that. that would, or like... Whatever. <laughs> that looked pretty random as well. I was going to try to make something that looks didn't look organic, but those looked, or, looked organic. So put some shading behind the bottom draw. Find this vein a bit. And now we can put in the crocodile type scales. Now crocodile type scales are, in my opinion, easier to draw than dinosaur ones. Because you're basically just cross hatching a few lines down and a few going across the back like that and it's that simple so you can add shading though so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is put a stripe going across the mid section of the back there and of course we want to give it make it look 3d so make sure each one's the shading is rounded a bit Crocodile scales are easier because you also are basically putting the entire shape of the body in there. The metric or sea creature <laughs> doesn't really have a stomach. It's like a tube, a hot dog, basically. <laughs> like usually in dinosaurs, you'll see the stomach, but in this one you can't really see it at all. Mostly because of the plates. I want to make it to the belly or the bottom part of the Metricosaur, the Metriorhynchus is on the ground. So we'll draw in our ground a bit here. And we have contact there with the belly and the surface. And then we'll put in the arms. Arms are quite stubby, similar to Super Kool-Aid or Coolosaurus. I'm just quoting the game Beaver there. Super Kool-Aid, that's his nickname for it. Now for the um, hands, you can put a little bit of claws in, but they don't. It doesn't really have claws. It's got webbed feet as well. Some wrinkles in there as well and we will shade the bottom or the left side of the foot and this here is where we will also put in some dinosaur type scales which are circle circles give it a bit of texture there I'll put in the other opposite 
arm and hand. This one will completely shade in. Because we want it to look. Or it's, this is the inside part of the other arm. And it's under the belly, so it doesn't get much sunlight, and therefore it is shaded. I'm going to put some shading under the belly. I know this is going to smear, but it can't be helped, so I'll just clean up the smears at the end of the video. I'm going to put it at the edge of a stream. I'm just going to have some fun here. Put some water in there. We'll actually give it some scenery. We'll put a little bit of grass. I'm not going to get carried away, I promise you. Um, side stuff, but. That looks pretty cool. So yeah, this is my, I can't believe I haven't mentioned this, this is my first video in 2017. So, hooray! First video 2017, or 2017, that's what most people say. I get kind of annoyed that people always are trying to get shortcuts for everything. Trying to abbreviate every almost Yeah, almost everything's abbreviated. Like I thought about calling myself instead of Danny the Dinosaur Drawer, calling myself um D D Danny the no D T D D. But that sounded kinda weird so And people once they're famous can do that because people will recognize it, but people wouldn't get it. They're like, why is his channel named that? And I think I like Danny the Dinosaur Draw better. Way better, actually. Because I'm not a fan of abbreviations. Like when people talk about the UN, they're like, the UN instead of saying the United Nations, for example. So put in scales there. Put in the back feet. In color, the back feet are a reddish color. It's kind of weird. So looks good. We're done with all the limbs now. Put a bit more shading there. This is actually looking very nice. Like exceptionally nice. It's quite exceptional. And I know you guys were request. some of you requested this. Plus, I know I have some amphibian fans out there who simply love the amphibians. You guys, you guys all know by now, my favorite are the carnivores. As are many, of course. Um, especially boys, boys like carnivores better usually like 50% of um, girls that I ask what's their favorite dinosaur they'll say triceratops or uh, the long necked one what's, what's that one called and every like kid or yeah boy I ask they'll be like oh usually, usually they'll answer velociraptor tyrannosaurus the usual 
Well, they might say, I don't really care about dinosaurs. <laughs> A lot of people say that nowadays. Like, I'm like, the only per like all my friends and acquaintances, I'm the only one who's really into dinosaurs. I'm not that into amphibians, as you guys can tell. That's why I can't pronounce this one. I should have looked it up before I started the video on how to pronounce it. <laughs> that would have been smart. But it doesn't really matter that much. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter at all because it sort of does. It shows that I've done my homework. So we're going to shade in all these crocodile scales that are looking fantastic. And now I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to try and get the tail to fit in. I'm going to go ahead and erase all this. Now that we've got the front part started already. I may actually bend the tail like that. So we can get the whole thing on the page. Yep, yeah, there's a bend. It doesn't have a bend in the picture I'm looking at. But this way, yeah, this is going to work out. So it's got like a shark, it reminds me of shark fin on the back. Very spiky. And this is its main, its main part of its body that meant, was meant to propel it forward in the water. I'm go ahead and clean this up a bit. There, looks good. Give it some texture. Quite thin, but it's not completely, it's not like paper thin, obviously. And then we want to give it this like fish type look. There's like strands of fiber looking muscle, or I don't know what it is, skin tissue that's in the tail. I'm going to make the tips look a little darker than the rest for no particular reason. Except that it looks cool. Like so. See that there's a lot of smudging there, but can't be helped. Well, it can be helped when we clean it up. Here I'm going to add this part of the tail. It's going to be shaded almost completely on the bottom. I made this tail a little bit longer than what it usually looks like. But well, that's okay. Yeah, I made it a lot longer, in fact. So I'm going to make the spikes end right about there. Even though they actually continue up to here, at the level 41. So you can do that if you like, but I'm just going to end them there. Also for the sake of the real dino, or real amphibian. I'll just call it a reptile, actually, because it's, it's quite reptilian. The real thing didn't have spikes, so us holding back a little bit on the spikes won't hurt that much. So yeah, we're going to cut 
continue the crocodile scales here. The camera shut off, so not sure where I left off, but I've put this in so far. And Dowler's going to continue and putting the stripe goes across the middle of it. And it's already quite, all that smearing made it look quite nice actually already. So we can thank the smears for that, I guess. Put a bit of shading there. It's always nice when the dinosaur or creature has a stripe or something unique about it. So yeah, that looks really good for our Metriohincus. Now you can put your initials in, put 2017 for the first time, at least for me, in a YouTube video. And I'm going to put in some more ground here. Some more ground, like so. This is one of the few videos I've put this much background, I might call it. I rarely do that much background. I'm smearing around there. But I will clean it up a bit. Like so. Clean it up with the eraser. Also around the spikes. It got messed up a bit. So yeah, there is our final view of our amazing amphibian. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. Um, so yeah, if you have not liked this video, please do so. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever you use. Um, leave a comment if you feel like it, especially about the whether you want me to do a few videos from War Dragons. I would I really appreciate that, and yeah, subscribe if you've not already done so, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.